Hey everybody, this is my Ascend H12 kayak and today we're going to talk about my infinite variable speed control that I hooked up to my trolling motor. I recently shot a video about how I mounted the trolling motor on the side there, so I'll go ahead and attach a card if you're interested in how I mounted the motor. But today we're going to talk about the motor controller and it gives me infinite variable speed control despite the fact that this motor is a Minn Kota C2 Endura 30 pound thrust. So it's their bottom of the line, low budget, $90 uh, trolling motor and it comes as a five speed. So if you know anything about how the trolling motors work, the five speeds are not only sort of inconvenient in the fact that you get only five set speeds, but they're really, really inefficient. They work basically as an on-off switch, and each individual set of speed coils is really resistance coils. So when you have it in the one position, 80% of the juice that's flowing is being converted to heat through the resistance coils and being dissipated out into the water, and only 20% of that is making it to the prop. So you're still using 100% of the motor's capacity, you're only putting 20% of it to the prop. So when you go into position two, likewise, you're just running it through a slightly smaller resistance coil, and now you're running 40% of it to the prop, but 60% of it is still being converted to heat and just dumped out into the water. It's a really, really wasteful uh, use of your battery. So what I've got on here is called a pulse width modulator, and it basically operates as a speed controller. And it does just what the name implies. It actually modulates the length of the on or off signal. So the higher you turn it up, the longer the on signal is on for, and the lower you turn it, likewise, the less it's on. So if you're running it at 50%, it's pulsing that on signal 50% of the time, but it's also off 50% of the time. Now, of course, it's switching on and off so rapidly that you'll never notice that on and off cycling. But what that's doing is that's saving your battery 50% of its use. So unlike the five speeds, when you turn this one down to a low speed, you really are drastically reducing how much battery life you're using. So not only do you get all the amazing benefits of having that infinite variable speed control, and if you've got any experience being out fishing and using five speeds, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, position one is a little too slow, or position two is a little too fast. You can never get it quite right. So having that infinite variable control uh, is a value in itself, but what it does for conserving your battery is just hard to describe until you've really been out there and spent all day on one single battery charge just because you've been cruising around at low speed. So the way I set this up is pretty simple if you know anything about basic electronics and wiring switches and stuff like that and that's really all it is is two wires that come in you got your positive and negative that go to your power source and then you got your positive and negative wires that go to your motor and then you've got two switches and I'm assuming if you get other pulse width modulators or speed controllers they're called various things uh, you can get different styles but ultimately you're going to want one that's got a toggle switch here that gives you on off or reverse and then of course you will get your actual speed control that also has a click on and off so you can turn it off here and you can turn it off by turning it completely off rather than forward or reverse or however you've got it wired. You can wire it either way. So that's as simple as it is. If you know how to put a hot and a you know, positive and a negative and a positive and a negative, you're good to go. So I'll actually show you how I wired mine together. And it's um, portable. I can take it in and out of the kayak without having to leave it in there overnight if I don't want to. I usually do, but I can take it out very easily if I want. So the first thing I did was to the motor, I wired, well, the first thing I did was I put these heads on wires. So they screw on there with these brackets that just, it's a lot easier than looping the wire around and trying to screw it on there and all that kind of stuff. Spend the time and put these little heads on there, run the screw through it, um, that is a closed loop head, so that screw goes completely through that. Uh, cannot come out unless that screw was completely removed. 
So I ran a hot, you know, a positive and a negative to a couple of clamps. Uh, these clamps go to my battery indicator that tells me how much juice I've got. So that's something slightly separate, but kind of connected. So it's basically a pigtail that runs to my battery, nice and simple. And then I ran a pigtail out. If you ignore these for a moment, I ran a pigtail with just a terminal at the end. It's got the positive and the negative. And then these are my clamps that come from my trolling motor. So instead of hooking my trolling motor to my battery, I hook it to here and then it goes through my switch and then that gets hooked to the battery. So again, just a simple switch mechanism, not real complicated at all. Now, the way I got my speed control switch and everything mounted all the way up here where I'm sitting, we can forget about this. This is actually that's defective. That needs to get sent back, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like out of the box. So what I did was I cut and spliced right here and right here I cut those wires and I spliced into this end these uh, trailer hitch connectors the three wire goes to the toggle switch and of course all I could find was a four wire at the store so I just we're not using the fourth wire there so basically this is a three wire and that just comes and we splice them to the wire that goes into the toggle switch and then the five wire that comes off of the dial switch your actual speed control switch this is a five pin connector and I just did a five wire and likewise we've got it just spliced right to the five wires that go to the speed controller and that allows me to disconnect them here I can disconnect it there and my switch and everything that I've mounted I just built this little switch box as you can kind of figure out for yourself I built that myself and this is just stuck to the side of the kayak with velcro so I can take that on and off anytime I want but when I'm sitting here that literally is just right at an arm's length away. I've got my flip button for forward or reverse, and then I've got my speed control right there. So that's in the forward position. And I can go all the way down to where it's barely moving. Or And then of course I can just flip my switch and we can go into reverse and then I've got infinite variable on the reverse as well. So a couple of points to remember if you are going to buy this speed controller or any other one, there's a couple things you'll need to remember. First of all about this switch, I recommend always turning it into the off position here before you do anything with this switch. Too many times I've had this turned three quarters of the way up and hit the forward and boom, it just kicks on. So you want it to not do that. You want it to be, you want this to set whether you go forward or reverse and then you want this to turn it on and start moving. See, I can turn it off right there and then when you turn it back into the forward position, it's just on at that speed. So if you've got it turned up too much, you know, that puts quite a jolt on the motor mount and everything else. So just keep that in mind when you're operating this to try to turn it off using the speed control switch and then just use that to set your forward reverse or stop you could think of it as. So that's that. The things to remember about this. First of all, you want to make sure you get your speed controller. And I will put a link uh, to this one below. It's the exact same model I'm using. Again, these are not super high budget. So don't expect really, really high quality. This one was defective out of the box and I'm sending it back. Uh, I replaced it with that one and I have not had any problems with that one uh, so far. But you want to make sure you get one that handles the amperage of your motor this motor is rated at 30 amps i don't know if it actually draws that much it doesn't have a heavy load on it or anything but it's rated at 30 amps so i treated it as 30 amps and what i did was i got a motor controller that is rated for 60 amps and can surge up to 100 so if you're not buying this one with the link down below and you're buying a different one 
keep in mind, especially if you're shopping on some place like Amazon where it's kind of sketchy in the descriptions, a lot of times the amperage rating they'll give you will be the surge amperage rating. So don't get one that is rated for right what you need it at. There's no point in pushing something right to its limit. Get something, you know, it's the, the, you're talking about a couple extra dollars. Get something that's going to very, very easily handle whatever amperage load you're going to run through it. That'll keep it cooler. It'll make it run more efficient. Again, there's no need to get one rated for exactly the amount of amps you expect to run through it. I go by the rule of thumb of just doubling it. So this one's rated for a 60 amp uh, continuous draw or a 100 amp surge. And when I operate it, even at full crank, I can touch the heating, uh, you know, the, the cooling metal here, and it's warm. It's not even hot to the touch. So keep that in mind the other thing that is important to remember is you want to get one that's frequency is above 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz if not what's going to happen is you're going to hear it humming or whining it's within the range of human hearing and it's really really obnoxious i've inadvertently gotten um units that were rated for like 800 hertz or 1200 hertz or something like that and it makes a humming noise it's terrible it's it'll drive you insane um 25,000 hertz is a fairly common um one or 25 kilohertz is another way it's listed um, that's a very commonly rated frequency get that or anything higher than that 20,000 hertz is pretty much the limits of human hearing so if you get one that's rated at 20,000 there's a chance you could still hear a very very high-pitched whining so stick with the 25 kilohertz or 25,000 hertz uh, and that's well above the range of human hearing, and you will not be getting any humming or whining noises uh, or anything like that. But other than that, it's, you know, again, I can ramble on and make it sound a lot more complicated than it is, but it's a positive and a negative that goes to the battery and a positive and negative that goes to your trolling motor. Now, I will point out that, if you didn't notice, I don't have the head on my trolling motor anymore. We will do another video where I talk about uh, how I did that and why and so on and so forth. There's a few things you need to know about doing that. Uh, the long and short of it is, if you've got a fully intact trolling motor that is indeed still a 5-speed, uh, what you want to do is hook it up the same way, you know, get yourself your little pigtail running to your motor and everything, hook your terminals up, and then with this turned off, of course, you want to set your trolling motor to forward and you want to set it to five. You want to just turn it all the way up in the forward position and leave it like that. And then you'll do all your controlling through here. If you've got this set to one, it doesn't matter what you do here. You can turn it all the way up. The highest it's going to be able to go is going to be whatever you've got your trolling motor set at. So set your trolling motor all the way at five in the forward position and then do all your controlling through here. Or, if you want, better yet, take the head off of it completely and just run your positive and your negative wire directly out. So now if I take my pigtail here and I hook this directly to the battery, the moment it comes in contact with the battery terminals, that is at full crank, 100%. There's no switching, there's no slowing it, there's nothing. It's just full on as I connect it. And that's all I need because I do all my controlling through my motor controller there. So look forward real soon to a video on how I took the head off of this. Remember, this is a very low budget um, setup. I think all told, including the battery, uh, the motor controllers, the foot controls. Because remember, once this goes down in the water, I don't use this to steer with. I steer with my rudder and my pedals and everything back here. So that's another reason I don't need the head on there. Uh, I don't need that tiller handle or anything. All I do is lower that into the water or raise it up out of the water and then I do all my steering with my feet so between my foot pedals my rudder uh, the battery the wires the motor controller the motor itself all of that I've got about $350 uh, tied up into that so not too bad when you consider some of the alternatives out there and you think about with some of those really high priced um, 
kayak motors go for. Some of them are in excess of $1,500 uh, just to basically accomplish the same thing. They might look a little sleeker and they might have some more bells and whistles and stuff, but at the end of the day, I can go out there and motor for hours and hours and hours and hours on end without ever touching that motor. I steer with my feet and it's just absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love it. So feel free to leave any questions or comments if you've got any more requests or anything else about how I set it up. Uh, let me know and I will go over that. I will go over the motor and taking the head off and everything. Again, it's not a big deal, but we will talk about it. And I will also shoot a video separately about how to actually run the wiring uh, through your foot pedals here so that you can still adjust your foot pedal uh, and the wiring, everything is in there properly. I know a lot of people get kind of confused about exactly how to do that. They seldom come with um, clear instructions. So that'll be another video coming up in the near future too. So thanks for watching this one. Make sure you're subscribed. I'm gonna put this one on my outdoors playlist. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.